Hey internet people, so today I'm going to be doing kind of a down and dirty video on a little project I'm working with with Brooklyn Voltage Lab. We're doing a spring show and this is just an object we might use with it, so I wanted to do a proof of concept. So what I'm going to be making is a uh, octopus, a paper mache octopus that has copper tape and conductive paint that's then all that soldered to some patch cables. Um, with the idea being that your body's electricity when touching the object uh, can create some difference in some form, um, some sound shape uh, in, let's say, gates or um, not exactly sure how it's going to work, uh, but it will be, um, let's say you're having a gen generative patch in the background and uh, this is just going to be a kind of tactile fun thing. I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm not going to really get too into the details. Hopefully I'll have notes in the in the description about the paste recipe and the um, and maybe some of the other materials I use, but um, but in general, uh, we're just going to go ahead and get right to it. So, the materials are going to be what you find around the house, and then you know some specialty items like the electric paint and the copper tape. I'm also instead of um, clay, I'm going to use drywall spackle, and then I'm going to be using a wood glue, paper mache layer to finish it off to prevent mold. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, some wire uh, hangers. I'm going to create the arms, uh, the, the, the kind of skeleton for the arms, and then also a kind of um, harness or, uh, or brace for the, the head. This isn't going to be that big. I, this, because this is a uh, kind of proof of concept, I'm going to make it you know, somewhat small. It's not going to be as big as a lot of paper mache, um, but uh, hopefully uh, we'll, it'll all still work. So. I should also mention that this project was inspired by a uh, creator on Instagram. And so I'm going to link that as well so that you all know where this idea uh, came from. All right, I think I'm gonna do something for the base of the neck or, or body of the octopus as well. I'm not exactly sure how I'll do this, but I should have some kind of like more solid. All right, so we have here, I'm gonna use, kind of use as the base. If you can imagine the head's gonna come out of this. And now we're going to
You know, I should probably be wearing gloves as I've already, I think, sliced my hand a little bit. So, you know, just watch out for that. I'm gonna use good old scotch tape to fasten the bottom, because this will all be covered. It doesn't really matter what it looks like right here. All that matters is trying to get them as evenly spaced as possible. Watch out for your eyes as well. I feel like I almost have blinded myself about three times so far. And I just want everyone to be careful out there. A little more hazardous than expected. All right, so here is our body. Pretty interesting. Um, now we gotta kind of put it together. All right, so I'm gonna do fine detail. So I'm gonna want to have pretty small strips for the paper mache. I'm just cutting about a inch to half inch strips and we just need a lot of them, so. All right, uh, so that is gonna be enough of our paper for now. I'm sure we'll have to make more. I'll be using two different kinds of paste today. I'm gonna go ahead and use um, some bread flour and some water. I think it's almost equal parts. Uh, you just basically make a little bit thinner than a, than a pancake mix. Although it's supposed to be kind of up to you, um, however you feel like you can shape the paper. Um, we're gonna soak the paper in that before we apply it. Um, and then at the end, I'm gonna use a glue paper mache to kind of uh, prevent mold from uh, attracting to the octopus and to give it a more solid finish. So <clears throat> let's make the flour. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and do, uh, what is that, uh, one and a half cups of flour and then I'll add tap hot water until it gets the consistency I want. I can't really get a good shot here, but here's the flour. It's about a cup. Bread flour might be actually better than all-purpose flour um, for various reasons. I think it's because it has more gluten in it. As you can see, just like, just like pancake mix, maybe a little, a little less. Down for just one second. And the other thing I wanted to mention that we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna kind of fill out maybe a little bit of the octopus's arms using newspaper. to put it in a roll like that, cut it in half. Try 
kind of get a feeling for where it ends. So, first thing I want to do is I want to get all this newspaper, I'm going to get some of this paper mache on it, just to kind of wetten it and hopefully make it almost like clay. Make sure to get the inside as well because this is where we will be wrapping the copper wire around and then soldering on the soldering on the patch cables. This is gonna be the front, so I, <clears throat> so I have to kind of be attentive to how this looks, especially the front, to make it look or be possible to have a face coming up. You know what, I think I'm gonna put this in the oven a little bit. I'm not sure if that's a thing to do. Um, there's paper here, but I'll put it on like super low. I'll put it on the lowest of the low. And I'll put a little bit of oil on the pan so that this will stick and hopefully this will set a little bit like a cast. All right, I just put a little bit of canola oil on there and I'm gonna wipe it off so it's almost completely gone. It should just be like the minimal, 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 like almost if it's already clean. All right, so I have gone ahead and uh, put this in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes uh, and 175, just to kind of get a little more tacky and dry so I can handle it. I don't think I'll be able to turn it upside down, but I'm gonna work on these arms a little bit. And then I'm gonna try at least also get the, um, the head done as well. When that happens, I'll probably uh, have it uh, overnight and then finish up tomorrow.
just looks like a face hugger from Alien. All right, I've made quite a mess here. Um, so I've gotten it out of the oven for the second time and it's um, it's some dry, some a little tacky, but that's fine. Um, all I'm gonna do next is I'm going to put do the balloon for the back of the head. After I set the, um, the head, I will uh, let it dry overnight and maybe even over the weekend and hit back in a couple of days. Um, and then I'll put the eyes in and um, paint it. So this is kind of a round balloon and I'm, I want more of an elongated shape. So I'm gonna use a little bit of tape to try to make it more cylindrical or ovoid. Too big. All right, the sun's going down, so I think I'm gonna uh, have a stopping point for today. The next stage is we're gonna uh, put some eyes on it with some spackle and and some lightweight spackle, and then we're gonna put a glue coat on it. Um, then we're gonna paint it, and we will then put the electronics um, on it. And while we're at it, uh, maybe give a like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I do projects here. I do uh, synthesis. I do interviews. I do music. Um, and, uh, and I hope uh, you come back. All right, so this is the next day. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, while my kid is watching some TV, try and get a little prep in for the next stage, which is um, putting the eyes on, forming some of the tentacles, and then doing a glue 
last surface paper mache. So this is where we're at right now. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna put some eyes here and I'm gonna be using just some lightweight spackle. Um, it should dry pretty fast and give some shape so that we can then put the uh, paper mache over it and kind of give it some form. Um, and then I have the paper mache I saved what we had from yesterday and I'll just use it in here. And this stuff is pretty soft, so it's a lot softer than I expected, but it's gonna work. I think it's a fast dry substance, so it will turn pliable within minutes, I think. All right, so just so you know, uh, the this was really soft, but I found that if you just took it out and then let it sit for a while, then it becomes pliable. Now again, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be taking this, creating more of a muscular structure, and then doing the eyes and kind of connecting them. So we're going to just do that real quick and then let that dry before we proceed in the afternoon. I'm gonna wait until this uh, hardens, and then I'm going to apply paper mache and thicken the stems of the tentacles. Um, right now they're a little too thin at the stems, so I would like to um, make them a little bit thick. Okay, so this is the third day, and uh, we're gonna th thicken those stems of the tentacles, and then we're gonna do one last paper mache application with the wheat glue, the wheat paper mache. Got to shake it up, make sure it all it gets down from the bottom. And as you can see, if you look at the eyes, it's going to be, there's some detail work that's going to go on. I'm also going to try and create some more musculature uh, as well, and then smooth out the rough spots on the tentacles. I'm also gonna cut these pieces of paper a little shorter so that I can do more detail work with them. I'm not really sure how that works in the you know, art of paper mache, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So first I'm gonna take some paper towel and use that as kind of like a a clay substance, because really when you get this full of paper mache, it almost becomes like a clay-like substance.
can see much thicker. So now you have a much more octopus-like tentacle structure than just the thin stems. This is face hugger, alien face hugger, and this is octopus. Start putting the eyeballs together. I'm using a knife to shape the paper into the eyelids so that it has the depth. All right, we're going to let this dry for about eight hours. And next I'm gonna flip it upside down and paper mache just on the inside, one small layer so that, cause that's where we're gonna be mounting the wiring. Um, cause remember this is gonna be an electrified um, thing. So from here on out, I'm gonna go ahead and have it dry on these little wooden stilts because the glue and the paper towel paper mache is gonna be very, very sticky. All right, uh, I'm not sure what day we're on, but <clears throat> uh, now we're gonna go ahead and put some suckers on the bottom of each tentacle. I'm gonna do that by just making some uh, basically uh, dough balls and then um, rolling little dough balls and then pressing them in columns up the um, bottom of the tentacle. So what I'm gonna do here is just add some water slowly until All right, as you can see, we have the bottom of the paper mache octopus, and I'm gonna go ahead and do two things in the next session. Where it's flat, I'm not gonna put any, but where it starts after, where it starts to come up, we know that, so that's flat. You know, I should probably put it down to kind of mark the tip of here. Pretty much this whole thing, this whole thing, this whole thing. And then after we put the tentacles on the octopus, we're going to put, um, we're gonna start using glue paper mache and we're gonna kind of cover this up and have it come in. And glue should dry a bit faster than the, um, than the other stuff. So hopefully we can move this along a little faster. But, um, so first things first, let's do the tentacles. Here we go, we have all the suckers, and now we're going to seal them in with our glue. So let's go ahead and make the glue mixture. From what I've read, a simple wood glue mixture is just 50-50. So I have four ounces of water, about, I'm just gonna go and make it go to eight. So 
So I'm treating this pretty much as like a sealant. Um, more than for the paper mache. I actually would like to see a lot of the detail. So I'm actually gonna use paper tissue for over the suckers and then I'll use the paper for the inside. And then actually when I do the skin of the octopus, I think I'm gonna use paper towel because it has that great texture. The paper towel didn't work out exactly as, one, as I wanted it to. It's breaking up a little bit, giving it kind of a, a hairy kind of feel to it. So I wanted it to be smooth. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry and see how it looks dry. And I'm just gonna work on the undercarriage for a little while. All right, so we have the uh, tentacles are finished. They don't look, they're not my favorite. Um, I think I would choose a different way to do this. Um, I will be putting another layer on top, so I think that it won't look as ragged, but I'm just gonna have this dry and we're gonna see how it looks from there. Um, I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't any uh, of the dough ball exposed to the air, but um, some of it came through and hopefully since I'm using, um, since I'm using acrylic paint, uh, that will also kind of act as a sealant and smooth over the texture of the, of the surface. All right, so uh, the bottom is now uh, pretty much dry and we're gonna, um, we're gonna basically gonna put one last layer of uh, glue paper mache and that's to keep it from smelling and attracting mold and all those kinds of things. And hopefully actually give it maybe a little bit of a, um, a texture. The paper towel has a kind of bumped uh, texture on it that will give it almost like a little bit of a skin feel. Maybe a little too much detail, um, but after this, this should be the last step before we paint. All right, so it's a little late, but uh, I finally finished the final uh, layer, the glue layer, which is uh, kind of the sealant and gives it the, the, the skin texture. Uh, to, all there's left really to do now is to paint uh, and to um, add the electronics.
All right, so the octopus is now completely dry. It um, has almost like a, a fiberglass cast feel to it. That's very lightweight, and it has a hole in the center in which we will be putting the electronics. The next step we're gonna be doing is uh, going to put on the copper tape. We're gonna fix it to the dry paper mache and then we are going to paint the octopus, and then we're gonna paint with the electric paint, which is conductive. Um, the idea being is we're gonna be able to touch the, the top or the arms, and it will send your body's electric pulse into a patch cable so you can uh, trigger some uh, modules. Um, that's the idea. All right, so here is the copper tape. It is um, conductive on both sides, on the adhesive side and the top, obviously, of the, of the tape. I've never used this before, and I've never painted an octopus, much less made a paper mache octopus. So all of this is going to be very um, new to me. So first, let's try again, go ahead and snip off some copper to see how it will adhere to the surface. Pause. I should explain what I'm gonna do. I wanna have four patch cables coming out from underneath the octopus. So I'm gonna, that means I'm gonna have four strips of copper tape. Uh, I'm gonna have one coming from uh, the eye down, one coming from the head down, and then one coming from this tentacle and one coming from this tentacle. And that's what's gonna be the, my basic. And then they'll fold underneath, and this is where they'll be soldered onto patch, patch cables. So, just figured I would explain that real quick. I want to get it really firm on the surface. So All right, so like I said, I've never painted an octopus before, but I have, because I made the skin have paper towel, which has this kind of skin-like texture, almost like chicken skin, um, it's gonna have some natural uh, depth to it. So hopefully the, the skin will kind of take care of itself as far as looking realistic, as, as opposed to painting on a 2D surface. Now I'm gonna, start off with a like a white and blue base and then we're going to have some dark red is going to be the octopus is going to be a reddish color uh, with black and yellow eyes but we're going to lay down a base first of the white
All right. Here we are. Tomorrow we will um, put in the um, the patch cables and solder those in, and we'll see how it goes. This is just a proof of concept, so uh, probably took a little too much time working on it, but I think it looks pretty cool, and uh, I'm excited to see what happens. So. All right, so here we have our octopus. I think what we're gonna go ahead and do is just show you how I'm making the, um, how I'm gonna power this and the kind of the circuit that it's going to be using for the touch plate um, octopus. I'm gonna go ahead and build the proof of concept on a wood block before I put it in here just so you can see more clearly and I'll draw out the schematic as well. Now I am not in any way a person who knows how to read schematics or anything like this. So mine's going to be very, very basic. Um, I'm actually um, basing this off of a video that I had seen uh, synth DIY guy um, on YouTube, and I'll link that in the description below, of course. Um, so basically what I'm going to be doing is having two different kinds of uh, modulation sources on the octopus. Um, the first kind is going to be very simple. It's just going to be the two strips of copper tape and then a patch cable that's been split into the tip wire and the shield wire, okay? And then uh, one will be soldered on each side. So when you connect it, it will put out a mild, a really, really small change in voltage, um, which will be... Uh, which can be read by some CV inputs, not all. I wanna be very clear with this first one. I'm pretty much building this explicitly for the circuit bent VCO by synth tech, Synthesis talk Technology. The CV input on that module is very sensitive and I'm, uh, there are other sensitive modules where you can just literally push that contact point and it acts as a gate. I'm not going to go ahead and build something much more elaborate than that because I don't need it for my, my setup um, and that would take a little bit more research to be able to figure out how to do that. Um, but this one's just going to use your body, your body electricity. The other one I'm going to make is a little bit more complicated. You're going to start off with a 9 volt battery. And you're going to have your two strips. Um, and then you're going to have a pot, trim pot. And this is looking up, so this is the knob, and this is ground. Um, and then we're going to have the patch cable. I probably should have, I could probably just install a jack for this so I don't have to cut off the patch cable. Um, that was probably the thing I will do eventually. I'll replace this with a, with a, an actual jack. Um, but for now I'm just going to actually connect the wires to the octopus unit itself. So we're going to split again the patch cable from, um, to have the shield and the tip. So, and how we're gonna work this out is I'm going to, we have a nine volt We have a nine volt battery uh, plug-in that would be used for, let's say a daisy chain or something for guitar pedals. I have right here. I just snipped off the end and I got, uh, this right here is the negative and that is the positive. Um, and I went ahead and put some little shrink, uh, shrink shrinking tube on there as well. Um, so that right there. So this is positive and that is negative. 
These are solder terminals. And we are gonna solder that right there. And then this one is gonna go to this pin here. This right here is the, uh, the tip. Go to the center pin. This negative is gonna go to the shield wire of the patch cable. And we're gonna go ahead and also wire the ground to the negative and the shield wire. As well, we're going to solder a wire from the ground onto the body of the pot itself. So I think it might be a good idea just to, I think it might be a good idea just to kind of demonstrate what, I, what I'm doing for you. Just as a reminder, I'm gonna show you this. These kind of go in and the tape is stuck to the paper mache and I don't want it to pull up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna uh, put wires on here first. I think it's very important um, because you don't want it to pull up. We're gonna go ahead and just put these wires in first. And I think I'm actually gonna put some more, uh, some more shielding so I can slide that up and actually clench everything down. I wanna make sure everything is sealed because you're going to see a lot of breakage maybe. And then we know that this is going to be connected to the right pin. So this is what I've taken for this um, patch cable. Clip it off. You can tell which one is in the, the tip is because it's inside. So this is the longer one is the tip and this one is the negative or ground. So real quick, before we proceed, I'm gonna solder Now you want to, might want to scratch this up beforehand. It takes a minute to actually get. All right. So now that's in the center pin. And then now we just need to connect Now, one thing that's very important is that <clears throat> you really cannot allow these two wires to ever touch when that battery is on because it will short circuit and then make that battery burn, blow up. 
do all sorts of terrible things. So just as a warning, So I will be, um, so here we go. This is all set up. Now this is ready. You should be able to put this on and it should not get warm. You should not feel it get warm. And it's not, so it's, now this pot will allow you to increase and decrease the amount of um, voltage that goes uh, into the module. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try it out real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so it was a success. Um, so as you can see, the whole idea is that you have, you, know, you have to touch this and then you can touch this and it will make the, the noise. I, I was trying to make it so it was just a single touch, but that is not how it is going to work. So for instance, you'll have to touch one and then you can move the other. Um, so that's going to be just the two. There's going to be this one and this one. There's only, only going to be two coming out. I, I think that I'll be able to make more, um, perhaps, uh, you know, as I, if I want to kind of explore more of this project, I can add probably every tentacle could have their own. Uh, but just for this, uh, for this example, I'm only going to do two, uh, and that way we can move on. So I've chosen pink and blue to go along with the colors of the octopus. Let's go ahead and make our new patch, our two patch cables. That's the shield, that's the tip. Now, here we go. These are the two parts right here that I'm going to put a bubble. I also want to check real quick the connectivity. So this paint is conductive. It's not super conductive, but I'm gonna put another layer on there and see if we can't try to make this a little better. I'm gonna need two strips this long. And then one half as long, I think. So 
So here are our little wire pieces. You only need a small amount. Don't expose too much wire. All right, so first things first. Put that down there so that I can pull it back up over it. I'm sure there are so many rules about using too much solder that I'm breaking. And now we are going to connect Okay, all seems to be in order. Now, let's plug it in, see if anything gets warm. All right, and I think that I'm going to glue these right here. I've stuck this in here and glued the wiring in here um, and it's gonna harden. Now, eventually I'm gonna have to take it out. Um, I think it's gonna be best if I put this all in an enclosure that the octopus sits upon. But for now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just stick it underneath and uh, just for the, for the purposes of this demonstration. All right, so that works. Now let's go ahead and do the second one. The second one's gonna be a little longer First, let's go ahead and get our our gloops, our blobs of So you'll recall this is just that very simple uh non no extra voltage other than our bodies. So it really doesn't matter which one we go with here.
so this is the the final steps. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little more uh, touch up paint just to make it look a little like tiny bit better, and then I will do a demo uh, tonight, and then uh, and then there we go. Kind of excited to be through with this. So.